Welcome back to Fun with Film in Largest Part 2 and the fun I'm having here I deserve an Oscar. I'm not going to get one but you know it's worth a try I suppose. Basically there are two types of enlarger. We'll just put a bit of paper over that bit there. We don't want you looking at that. That's where I just went wrong because I realised I can't spell. Uh, basically we'll start off with two types. There's the diffusion enlarger and a condenser enlarger which we yeah, I might be able to fit that over here condent so <laughs> ignore my writing diffusion enlarger is the kind of enlarger that uh, I've been using it's the easiest way to do color enlargement is with a diffusion enlarger where the light source is squirted into a box or something and allowed to mix is allowed to blend and it's eventually it finds its own way towards the next stage so if we have a light bulb there there we are there's a light bulb you can tell it's a light bulb it's got filament in it and we put that in a box so we do the box in a different color let's do the box in a blue Oh, let's not, shall we? Let's do it in a green. We might not even be doing it in a green at this Oh, there we go. Um, and, and we can put that in a, a highly reflective box that's extremely white on the inside. And then we can put a reflector at 45 degrees there. Uh, and a diffusing material there. And then the negative can go in there that's the negative and then we're into the lens stage and I like pretty colors so we're going to change colors quite a lot in this and there's the lens so the light comes out of here quite randomly red um, the light comes out of here quite randomly and it scatters all over the place and it gets to there and it gets scattered further and it's down to the lens then to focus this evenly illuminated image onto the baseboard down here and you get a pretty picture so the light sort of comes through there but the lens focuses it and you get your image you know da 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 typical sort of light always has to go the other way doesn't it um, and you get your image down there upside down of course well, I don't know, fuss. Condenser enlarger is slightly different. Condenser enlarger, these days, light bulb will hang there. There we are. Uh, and it will have two lenses. Uh, one there going that way, and another one directly underneath going that way. And that collects all the random light. We're going to do light beams in a different colour, just to keep you confused. No, we want it in the same colour. That will collect all the random light that's coming from there and straighten it out and put it straight. So, you know, another light beam will come through there and come out there straight and a light beam will come over there, hit something and it will make its way back and get straightened and come out there. So, all the light rays are parallel. And they go through the lens. What colour is the lens? No, no, the negative. They go through the negative. And then another lens. Another lens there. Big lens there. Um, and get focused. Yeah, they get, it all gets focused somewhere down there. It's the wrong colour. Did I drop the one on the floor? I'll probably drop one on the floor. Uh, no matter. That's kind of how it works. It gets slightly more complicated than that. There are advantages with the diffusion enlarger. Uh, it's very easy to use dichroic filters because the dichroic filters will go in between the lamp and the in fact, if we put an opening in there, we can then put the dichroic filters in 
Um, I've run out of colours. It's cyan, that's appropriate. The dichroic filters can then go in there and the light's evenly mixed and it's beautifully evenly mixed and it comes out through the neg, through the and the one of the advantages with using a diffusion filter is it tends to iron the neg for you. So any imperfections on the negative don't happen. They, they you know they get ironed out. The, you know, the, the dust and stuff tends to get blended, but you also lose contrast. Condenser in larger, you get really high contrast, but all the defects on the negative show. And that's not quite so good. Now there are a couple of others that you ought to know about because you might want to make some, particularly if you get a, an old um, Patterson enlarger or something. It's very simple. It's just a sphere with a light bulb in it. Um, you might want to play with this. The most brutal form of condenser enlarger is the point source. Where you, you literally, you know, you can have an enlarger that sort of shape, and um, we will then put in. Um, yeah, yeah, okay, well, we'll use. No, we won't. We'll change oh, a different colour. Yellow this time for the lens stage, because well, I've, yellow is the next colour out of the bag. We then, well, it's not the lens stage; it's the condenser, and we can then put in a condenser there. And what we have up here as our light source is it's a point source. I, I'm, I'm saying we could look at this now uh, if we can get if you can get hold of an old um, Patterson or something similar. They, they, they literally, it's just a sort of dome with um, a light bulb hanging in it. You can put in a point source because you can use an LED, and it's a tiny little light like that, and that. Then you can see sends rays of light very evenly out from a single point. And it's almost theoretically perfect because this, this is you know theoretical perfection, isn't it? And it gets sorted out and then pointed. Don't know where that one's going to go. Uh, it's going to go somewhere like that. Um, very evenly through the neg. And that gives an incredibly high contrast. It gives an immensely high contrast through the negative and all the detail, all the grain of the film, all the imperfections in the film, all the dust, all the scratches and everything else gets produced in incredibly high detail down here somewhere. Uh, put the other lens in. There you go. There's another lens and yeah, there's the paper underneath. Well, well, we've run out. The paper's off the end of the frame. Incredibly useful bit of kit. Uh, you can actually get point source heads for my Devere. They do occasionally turn up on Fleabay at enormous cost. So, yeah, you know, I haven't got one. And the other one is the cold cathode head. Now, my father for a while had a cold cathode enlarger and he got rid of it because he said, oh, I can't get the tubes anymore. At the time, I guess that was 1970s, probably couldn't have got the tubes. Uh, but now we can get round it because you can get cold cathode tubes again because they use them for lighting cars and signage because it's cheaper and safer than neon. It's a synthetic cold cathode, but it still works. And it's been so long since I've seen inside a cold cathode enlarger, I can't actually remember how they go. But the light source is literally a cold cathode. It's uh, it's it's a tube that, that sort of kind of runs like that. And that goes out and that goes out and there's the wires leading off there. And it produces, that's from the top, so side on. It's, it's a light source that's kind of like that. So it's a very soft light source. And I'll tell you who uses them, Clyde Butcher in Florida, 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 with his big enlargers. He's printing negatives that are 11 by 14 inch and he's got three of these enlargers and they weigh three quarters of a ton each. 
and he he's got three of them they they use the um, cold cathode light sources it's actually pale blue and the other thing that people are doing now and a lot of people are doing are looking at rgb ah let's do in color r g b there we are so we know what they stand for leds And what they're doing with the RGB LEDs is they're falling. Sorry, we've, we've just had to have a bit of a cut there because the camera stopped on its own without command. I'm getting really fed up with it. Uh, with RGB LEDs is they're, they're making networks which kind of synthesize the cold cathode, big flat arrays of, RE, uh, uh, of LEDs through a diffuser and they're using red, green, blue. Now... The paper is only sensitive to blue and green. It's not sensitive to red, so you've got an instant safe light there for focusing. You get rid of that, you've got green and blue. The low contrast emulsion, because it's a... Uh, Variable contrast papers are, are double coated. There's, there's two emulsion layers. There's one is a low contrast layer the other is a high contrast layer and the green layer sorry the green layer the low contrast layer low con is only sensitive to green and the high contrast high con is only sensitive to blue and by balancing the two you can get the image to print it's a bit of low contrast a bit of high contrast and you can get any grade you want so by mixing the LEDs, it can literally dial in uh, a greater contrast. Wow, brilliant. And that's what there, a lot of people are experimenting with now. It's worth looking at and it's worth doing a bit of research on because I haven't, not for a long time. And one day I intend to build one of these devices. You get a cheap in larger, as I say, the one of these old, um, what are they called, Patterson... Yeah, old Patterson enlargers. Uh, they're, they're, they're about. They're, there's a, a, a lot about uh, if you can find them on eBay. And they're usually the cheaper end because they were built cheaply. And it's a light tight box with a light bulb in it and a, some lenses and somewhere to put your legs. Uh, but they, they're they going to be infinitely adaptable and brilliant for experimentation. And RGB LEDs might be quite good. The problem they're having is the pure green that gives the full low contrast and the pure blue to give the full high contrast. But anywhere in between, this, the results have apparently been quite good. And the other advantage with LEDs, very long lamp life and very low power consumption. What are we going to do next? We're going to go, I think, back into the dark room um, and possibly play with some of this fine grain release positive if anyone can explain fine grain release positive and put it in the comments you won't win a prize but uh, you might save me a lot of explaining to other people see you all again soon